We run out of people coming to your door, that's always the first thing. What we do is we get the phone call and go and meet them in the street. And you say, yeah. You find it hard to say no. And then it goes from meeting someone in the street, a street away, to the corner of your street, to the bottom of the stairs, to the front door. And once they've hit the front door, you don't want your neighbour see and so you say, come in. And it's over. You know, I had a nice flat down West River Road and um, like I say, not everything was fine in, in my life. But it was a safe place for me to go. It was, it was somewhere that I could call my own, so I could go out and do what I was doing. And um, I, could, I could open my door and I'd lock my door and, it, and I, I didn't feel invaded. And I suppose with having your own property, it gives a bit of freedom as well and a bit of uh, peace of mind, especially when you're sort of caught up in the grips of addiction. I don't know, the house was clean. It was, um, I had my own stuff in there. There was good times, bad times, like any home. And, um, and I'd go out and I'd, and I'd do what I'd have to do to get the money to get, what, to, uh, to get the drugs. And, um, you know, people would come round and ask if I could score and they'd say, can I, can I use in the house? And I'd say no. And, and I, had some, I had some good boundaries around that because I'd seen other people lose their properties and, and I knew of other people, and I knew of, of, a, of a group of guys who were going around taking over properties as well. And all it takes is somebody to go away for a little time, a little prison sentence or a detox, and then these guys would move in on the partner who was usually left. And I suppose it would be the case that she'd be left in a vulnerable place, and they'd see the vulnerability and um, just move in on them. And it's very hard when you sort of, you've got a 30, 40 pound habit a day, not to say no when somebody's got a bag of heroin and crack cocaine, and they're saying, look, let me sell from your front room. You know, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I'll go down the road and serve people up. I won't let people come to the house, but, all, but within that, boundaries get crossed. These houses do get taken over, and they do get taken over. You know, you'll find yourself sleeping in the front room on the floor while people are using your bed as a, as a shift. You know, so you find yourself being moved completely out of your house into one part of it. You know, they've already brought their way in, they've come in with a smile. You know, they've said they're going to do you a favour. You've bought the lie. You know it's your fault. You know you've let them in. It's not like they've kicked your door and said, right, we're going to start serving up. It never happens like that. They come in as friends. They go look after you. They go make your life a little bit better. You ain't going to wake up sick every morning. This is how they get in. They're your friends, and you know they're not, but they've got all the power. I wasn't manageable in my life. I was having to go out every day, put, my, put, put myself at risk, I was putting the community at risk, I was taking stuff that wasn't mine, but I, I had a bolt hole where, where I thought, you know, I had my own home, and I thought this is mine. And if I ever do sort myself out, I've got somewhere to start from. You know, and that's what it is, it's that dream that one day I'm going to stop because I, you know, that, that's a reoccurring thought with most people using drugs. I'm going to stop, I'm going to sort it out, I'm going to get it together and this is my property and I can build from here, I can start again. But when you find yourself in the street, where do you start from? The way that I felt when I was, I was in prison was I felt really angry. And I think I projected most of my anger at her, at my partner. I think most of my anger was, what's she done? You know, and not knowing what I know now, what's she done? Why the fuck has she let these people in? You know, we know what happens when they come in. We've seen it all before. We're not blind to this. And um, yeah, so a lot of anger, a lot of fear, feeling really, you know, I'm already locked up in a cell 23 hours a day. And, and now I've got something new to think about. Is where I'm going to go when I get out. When I lost my property, I turned up at another house that, had, that the same guys had moved to, and I ended up staying there. I ended up staying there, because where else am I going? So I come out of prison. I've got no property. I've got nowhere to go. As I turn up at the door, and I'm not seven stone no more, and I put on a bit of weight and I look a bit healthy. They greet me with a smile and an handshake. 
these guys, and all I can think about is, have they got any drugs in them? And, I, and as I walk through the door, one of them says, sort him out. You know, so all of a sudden, I'm on the back foot now, and I know it, and I can't stop myself from saying, you know what, this is, well, what's going on here? I'm, I'm already under pressure because they've got what I want. I can't stop thinking about what they've got. And, and, and I can't stop myself from engaging, buying, sitting on the city and becoming part of that, that, that whole thing again. You know, and I used for 20 years, Class A's. And this happened to me in my last three years of using. Because I had something in place. And, and I got caught out. And I got caught. Drug addiction is such a powerful thing. When people get a craving for drugs, they take the drugs, the craving doesn't get smaller, it just gets bigger. You start pouring petrol, petrol onto a fire. So that's what they're up against, you know, all the time. The wider community will separate itself from you. It, it, it's bigger than just people just uh, doing what they want to do using drugs. You've got somebody with mental health issues already in, 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 you know, in a home, and then you put that person on the street. How do they deal with their stuff then? Who's, who's going who's to look after them? You know, I, I, I love my home. You know, it's, this is my home. And a show house, I live here. You know, I shit and eat here. This is, this is my house. And, and you know, um, nobody comes past my door unless they're invited. You know, um, sometimes I don't even open the door unless I get a phone call. Not because I'm frightened, but I usually like to invite people into my own. I don't know, I remember moving into this property and, and, and you couldn't see through the windows because they were just black with dirt and uh, the walls were just, uh, I don't know what had gone on here, who knows. You know, this is, this is my own, you know, and I feel, I feel, I'm very proud of my own. I just feel a long, long way away from where I was. You know, there's not a night I come home and I think, I don't want to go back there. You know, I look forward to coming home. I feel safe here, secure here. It's, it's all right saying that's history, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's all right.